Good day and welcome to the Up on the Soapbox podcast. This is episode 21. We are officially legal, Dan. Lucky, Can you believe it? Lucky 21, right? I drink to that, but I don't drink. Well, at least right now, it's uh, it's a little bit too early in the morning, so I'll save it for happy hours. It's so. good to be legal, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, down, down in the Carolinas, we don't know when Prohibition ended, so you got to be very careful. I know they still make booze in the woods around here, so um, that's a whole other story. I am your co-host. My name is Brett Schaefer, and with me today is my other co-host, the president of uh, Soapbox Marketing Communication. I never say it like that, but that no, is our no. legal name, but our president... Dan Pickett, what's going on, Dan? So official this morning. I don't know what's going on. Well, I'm uh, I'm a little sore because I'm getting old because I decided to do a real rough task, which is rake leaves this weekend. I, I can't even move my shoulder all of a sudden. I'm just falling apart. Anyway, but I'm fine. Everything's good. Um, but that's my that's my pity pity party. I've always I've always said I hurt myself more sleeping now than I do uh, <laughs> awake. So it's something you got to be careful once you. Once right. you cross over that 50 mark, so oh. I totally get it. little nip in the air here in the Carolinas. I just read that we actually might see some snowflakes up in the mountains tonight. So, uh, you know, it's officially getting towards that cold time of year, which is always welcome for us Yankees that have uh, relocated to the south. Not only are Dan and I here today, but we have an ultra special guest, another Carolina guy, I guess a reformed Yankee himself. Uh, we have uh, Carl Ziegler with uh, Ruckus, a, uh, not necessarily a household name. That may be a good thing. We're going to find out. Um, so Carl's with us. His title, this is a great one. Carl's title over at Ruckus is Swell Guy, and I want to hear a little bit more about that as well. Carl, what's happening? Thanks for being with us. Tell us about yourself. Hey, guys. It's, uh, it, it's good to be invited. It's good to be here. Uh, you know, it's kind of cool, uh, three mature guys talking about being legal. So, uh, oh, boy, that's... If that's for me, I'm not. That's a, that's a podcast fail, but we'll, uh, yeah. I'd like to say I'd edit that out, but I don't know how. Yeah, well, that, that, that one's on me. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't do this as often as you guys. So, uh, r- rookie mistake, rookie mistake. So, good to be here, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm with Ruckus and Company. Uh, you might not have heard about us, but uh, our name continues to get out there. We just turned six years old uh, in October. So, uh, we're pretty excited about that been in the industry over 30 years but uh when we started ruckus we wanted to be a little different in a number of areas and uh one of those is we're focused on uh working with top distributors which is uh why why we love soapbox one of the reasons we love soapbox uh so uh you don't see us in trade show booths uh you don't see us doing print advertising uh we get some nice industry mentions so uh we, we dig that kind of stuff but uh you know we're, we're about building community and relationships and uh really getting to know our distributors well yeah tell us a little bit about the product line itself for those people that aren't familiar with ruckus and company what do you do what are your what are your core product categories and and how do you go about things maybe a little different than than someone else in a similar in a similar category okay yeah that's a good question our core uh, product category you know we would say flat plastics or anything that touches that so when i say flat plastics most often we think of a credential uh but it could be a credential, it could be a gift card, it could be a loyalty card, it could be a parking hang tag, it could be something that's a wild imagination of an end user that a distributor brings to us and we make it, but it's leveraging our core manufacturing capability uh, to produce that item. But when we say anything that touches it, uh, that would be lanyards, badge holders, retractable badge reels, uh, things that we do that are different. We don't care what size flat plastic it is uh, or what shape we have laser die cutting so we can do cool shapes. Um, so we're not gonna say you can order anything you want as long as it's these four dies. Uh, we're gonna say, hey, bring us your idea and we're gonna make it happen for you. We recently produced a credential that the bottom is shaped like a saw blade because that's what the logo was. And for the VIPs, we put a gold foil behind the saw blade so they felt like a real VIP. So we love creative ideas and we love really uh, building our equipment in a way that we can be super flexible and make those things happen. So other things we do, um, I think we're the only folks in the industry with uh, no charge for variable data. Uh, We don't charge for design change. We run digital presses. This is a digital world. Uh, what, What I say to distributors is, look, if your press operator can't change a design, or they can't load variable data, get them off the press. Otherwise, you're just sticking the distributor with an extra charge. And yeah. you know, if we do that and the distributor, they might take it, but they don't feel good about it. We're 
we're disrupting the relationship and distributors are our sales force. We want to be on the same side of the table as them. So, so are you, are you all domestically produced or do you have some import capabilities or how's that, how's that work? We manufacture uh, domestically and offshore. Uh, we are set up in Taiwan. We've been set up there for a number of years. We ship nearly daily out of Taiwan. Uh, one thing that works great for us is we do have inside reps at uh, UP UPS, international reps who watch our shipments for us. So if something gets hung up, we can massage that and move it through. So we're on average delivering in two to three business days after we ship. Average wow. production even offshore is eight business days. So wow. uh, that's not what we hear for most of the industry, but that's the mark we strive for. And uh, we've been staying on target. That's that's wonderful to hear. Uh, uh -huh. So so two sort of hot topics in the industry are you know the whole su supply chain issue uh, and then also events. You know are they are they back full force? Are they back? So uh, talk talk to us a little bit about both those things. How has the supply chain problem affected you, if at all? And and since you're doing a lot of these credentials and everything else, talk to us about how you think where you think the events in this in the corporate world are right now sure i think mean, two great questions dan supply chain uh it's an issue for the industry uh we've been doing a lot of planning on the core materials that we use uh stockpiling at times uh planning ahead it just takes more planning uh we i think we fared better than most uh we have some conversations with distributors about specific projects where we may say we have materials now, but we need to pull the trigger now because we're not sure what's coming down the line. But uh, planning ahead has uh, has been really helpful for us. Uh, we know that you know we're, we're all dealing with costs, logistics increase price costs and materials costs, raw materials. But uh, we've held the line pretty well. We expect uh, some increase for 22. But uh, yeah, I, I think we we've, we've done a good job of managing it. Uh, and that's what we hear from our distributors. Um, on the event side, uh, certainly we've seen a huge uh, spike in the past two months. Events are coming back. Uh, they're coming back increasingly. Um, I think we're starting to get over the hump of things coming back so fast that orders all came in at one time. Uh, things are leveling out a little bit, but uh, it's on the it's on the increase and. Uh, I think it's going to continue in that direction. Um, you know, I think some events will do things a little differently in the past, uh, but you know, certainly sporting events back full on. So you're you're op generally optimistic, is what you're. Um. Saying. Yeah, I would say generally to vary. Yeah. Good. Somewhere Good. somewhere in between those two. Yeah. So Carl, let's let's talk about your uh, title, swell guy. I don't disagree with the moniker at all, but where <laughs> how did? How did that come to pass? Because I notice you use it often, and I think it's pretty cool, and it definitely stands out. Is that the whole purpose? That's the whole purpose. It was a uh, a lucky coincidence. Uh, at one point, we were printing business cards, and I thought, uh, you know, so some people uh, love having CEO on there or president, and uh, I was like, you know, I I can talk to a guy on the loading dock as well as I can talk to uh, an owner of a major corporation, and I. You know, sometimes maybe that big title just for me was a thing that I didn't need to have it there. So I just put swell guy and, you know, eventually the phone would ring and people would go, I don't really know who I talked to, but is the swell guy around? <laughs> and so it was like, well, that works. And and you happen to be a fan of Leave it to Beaver, obviously. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, folks that I know, you know, uh, other suppliers and distributors, you know, the phone rings all the time. I pick it up and they'll ask how the swell guy is. So I love it. Yeah, it's really it's worked great. out well. Yeah, it's like, really it's like, you know, Madonna or Prince. I mean, you're yeah. swell guy. It's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It kind of <laughs> stuck. I like it. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, transition over to our soapbox moments. And Dan, I'm calling an audible here. I'm actually going to take the, take the lead on this this week, much like I did last week. Reason being is because I don't think Carl should have to follow this. It's uh, for the first <laughs> time. For the first time, I'm going to actually bring it down a little bit, but it's an important issue. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, my family marks an occasion. It's a sad occasion. My, uh, my father-in-law was, uh, was uh, sadly uh, killed by an inattentive uh, teen driver when he was riding his bike one day, 17 years ago to the day yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk a minute about sharing the road because I think it's really important. And, and uh, I, think, I think we all take a lot of that for granted. 
Uh, it's kind of nice actually being a northern guy moving to the south and you walk around downtown and the minute you put your foot out into the road, cars stop for you. Um, you know, so it, it, there's a little more awareness, it seems, where I'm living now than where I grew up. Um, but let's talk about rules of the road. You know, when, I, when you approach a biker and they're biking on the road, you do have to yield to those bikers and make sure they're safe. You have to pass them at a safe distance. Um, I've seen video. I have a good friend of mine who actually lives down in Atlanta now from um, back up in Jersey, but he's an avid biker, bikes hundreds of miles every weekend, and he puts a camera on his bike. And every once in a while, he'll put out videos of these drivers mm. that are just animals so overtaking these bikers and creating very dangerous situations where literally people be, can be killed. So take caution when you're approaching a biker, give them the space that they need to pass them safely. If it slows you down a minute, so be it. These are humans, these are adults, these are uh, parents, these are sons, these are daughters. Just be really careful around them. Who Second have, to that- who have, the, who have the right to be on the road. They have a right to, the, a legal right to be on the road. Second to that, I walk around my community every morning and uh, oftentimes I'm walking on roads where there are no sidewalks. And as a pedestrian, you are allowed to legally walk on the road. But unfortunately, I see most of the people I pass are walking on the road incorrectly. You were supposed to walk on the left-hand side, walking into traffic. It's a much safer proposition. Frankly, I don't know how anybody walks in the same lane as traffic because I'd like to see what's coming. So make sure when you're walking, you're walking on the left-hand side and just stay safe. People, when you're driving, you see pedestrians, you see bikers, please be aware, give them the room that they need. That's my soapbox moment. Uh, as I said, I didn't want Carl to follow this because it is a serious and somber topic, but it was very topical for me and my family right now. But you don't so. care about me following it. No, I definitely don't. You're, <laughs> you're the perfect buffer. So go ahead, Dan. <laughs> well, no, if I can just mention, I mean, obviously that's a nice sentiment and, and it makes sense and all that. I live in it. I live in an area that is just a heavily people, people drive to where I live to go biking. I mean, that's what, that's what people do here. And so we're, I deal with this all the time and you're right. I've, I've, I've learned to really, really cooperate with the, with these groups because it's, it's an everyday occurrence for us around here. And where I live in Pennsylvania there, I don't think they invented shoulders in, in the, on the roads here in Pennsylvania. I don't know. Everything is just real tight on the edges. So you really do have to either wait your turn to go around them or whatever. So it, it comes into play a lot, uh, but great advice. Yeah, got great fatherly advice from Brett. You're welcome. Week. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, you know, you set me up here to look like the bad guy because I know I'm, that's why you know, I did it intentionally. I'm about, I'm about to complain. You know, you you give us this nice little advice thing, but it, this happened to me last week. I went to the doctor's office. Okay, got a little problem with my knee. I mentioned my shoulder. I'm falling apart, as I mentioned. So you go up, you sign in to the doctor's office. And she says, well, this will include uh, your, your initial consultation will include a, an x-ray. I said, okay, great. I said, how, how much will that be? How much will that cost? Well, I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? I, I have no idea of knowing until I know about your insurance. I, there's a disconnect there that drives me absolutely crazy. I, I don't understand why, you know, it's subject to those types of things. And, and even at a point where they can't tell me what they're up there. So they're going to do so. What else do you buy? My question to both of you is, what else do you buy that you have no idea what the cost is? Nothing, right? No, very few Nothing. things. What else, what else would you? So it's just odd and it struck me wrong. I said, there's a soapbox moment for me because something has to change in this equation. I don't know what it is. I'm not smart enough to know what needs to be changed. It's a very complex issue. But what seems to me we've allowed these insurance companies, not the doctors, not the patients, but the insurance companies to immerse themselves in the middle of this equation and just kind of make the rules as, as this thing goes. So uh, anyway, that's my complaint for the day. I think uh, Carl and I are willing to uh, dissect this right now and come up with a solution, right, Carl? Ready? <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Carl, what's on your mind today? Well, uh, first, I appreciate the call out uh, to watch out for cyclists. I ride a road bike and uh, boy, uh, yeah, we, we can all tell some stories, but, uh, you know, the, the big thing is it's all looking out for each other, pedestrians, drivers, and cyclists uh, makes it a lot better world. So mm -hmm. uh, my soapbox moment, uh, boy, you guys went with the serious stuff and I'm going with uh, probably the opposite end of the spectrum because I, you know, I grew up uh, in Virginia, but had a lot of family in the North and uh, always watched professional sports and uh yeah, I root for the Steelers. I root for the Penguins and the best farm club out there, the Pittsburgh Pirates I root for. But uh, <laughs> best we, farm club. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a great farm club the last 20, 25 years. But when you when you move to the South, A, you got to declare allegiance. And then you begin to understand college football is the best sport in history. There is no more passion than college football. In my little town, we're 90 minutes from Clemson. We're 90 minutes from Columbia, South Carolina, home of the Cox. And we're 90 minutes from Athens, Georgia, which has the current number one team. And on game day, the amount of people decked out, the way the cars are decorated, driving around town, the pride and the cheering for the team. And then you go to a game and the tailgating is just off the chain. I know, you know, maybe the Buffalo Bills have an argument, maybe Lambeau Field has an argument, but I'm telling you as a group, as a culture, it's part of the DNA, it's the fabric. And when you talk to someone from other parts of the country, you, know, you usually get the, the, the no head shake and it's like, well, you need to come for a game. It take, it's a one game buy-in and usually people are like, I'm there. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's not well, like so some others. What's that? Did you pick an, did you pick an allegiance? Well, uh, sure. I put myself out. Uh, basic. So maybe I should use different language, but when we moved uh, being nine minutes from three teams, everyone wanted to know who you're going to pick. You got to pick. Yeah. Who you, and you, 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 and? You, get, you get badgered. Well, my neighbor came across the street one day and he said, look, I graduated from the University of South Carolina. I'm a member of the Gamecock Club and we want you to ride down the road with us to a couple games. I'm like, you bought me. I'm in. <laughs> so I root for the University of South Carolina. Very well, I'm the, I'm the father of a cock and I might have another cock next year. So uh, I, in, in any other podcast, this might be taken out of context. <laughs> um, but uh, but I am a uh, cock dad. And uh, but I'm an ACC guy because I went to Virginia Tech and I, I will tell you, I actually had a great experience in Clemson when I was in school. This is yep. before Clemson staked their claim as a powerhouse. Yep. And uh, I was down visiting a friend and we were walking to the game. and It was probably a three mile walk from where we were. And at that age, it really didn't matter. Wasn't complaining about knees or uh, broken backs at that point in my life. But we're literally on our way to the game. The game's about 10 minutes away from kickoff. And we probably had at least a half an hour more to walk and a woman in a van driving by us she passed us then she circled back and she stopped the van she goes Are you guys going to the game i said yeah she goes we'll get in the van you're not going to get there on time if you keep walking and we did we just went and she drove us right off at the front of the stadium I'm like wow this is uh I, I don't know why she didn't stay for the game yeah. but uh that's a whole other story anyway. yeah there are there are some lessons in jumping in an unmarked van too yeah. but we'll, so uh, far we'll, it's worked we'll, out yeah we'll leave that yeah, i don't need to go into detail. the south <laughs> exactly. Well, let, let me just throw my two cents in here. I am a Penn State fan. Uh, and when I moved to Pennsylvania from New Jersey, I, I'm more of a New York oriented guy. I could not root for any of the Philadelphia professional sports teams because I was, you know, a New York guy, but I didn't have a college team. So it was real easy, you know, Paterno at the time. Well, I know, I know we've had some, uh, some bumps in the road along the way. We'll leave that as it, as it were. But, um, uh, so I became this Penn State fan, and I, I just I lose my mind when they're playing football. I don't even it's like no other it's like no other allegiance I've ever had. So I'm more of a Big Ten guy. Uh, I root for the Big Ten over you know your SEC and everything else. But the SEC is is king. There is that's un, undisputed right now. No question mm -hmm. about that. But that's fine. I kind of like being sort of a, a David to the Goliaths. You know, I sort of like being a guy that can come up and, and surprise people once in a while. It's a good, it's a good position to be. I mean, if you're Alabama, you, you know, and you don't win a national championship, everything's a, uh, you know, a disappointment, right? So there you go. Well, let's hope they're disappointed again this year, but that's uh, for another time. <laughs> All right. So we're going to finish this up with our yes, no question. And uh, Carl, I, I will admit, I did a little bit of digging, at least in your uh, social media profiles. And I tried to come up uh -oh. with that yes, no question that uh, would pertain to you. And I think I got one here. So uh, okay. here's your question today. Is vinyl the best way to listen to recorded music? Absolutely, yes. Wow. All right, let's hear more. Yeah. Let's hear more. Well, it's not only the sound. There's something about dropping that needle on vinyl. You know, when that needle hits the groove and the sound comes out, there is just something super special. Uh, and after I started playing vinyl again, what we all forget, remember the liner notes, reading oh, the, uh, pulling it out, reading the liner notes. So like when you have a group get together and you put on a little vinyl, people start digging through stacks and they're like, they'll, they'll be talking about, I remember where I was when I heard this. 
and people will start picking different albums they want to play and you can go on all evening and you know at the end of the evening people leave and there's you know covers laying around and uh so it's not just me you know you, you wouldn't get together and have a group party to uh pick out cds right or cassettes I mean, no 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 i no. mean there's nothing like a good mixtape in the car i mean that that's okay closest but- closest thing we've done is we've we've passed telephones around to be like DJ on Spotify, right? So yeah, you, sure. you, know, yeah. you pick the next song, you got that, all right, you're on, you're up, whatever. And we have passed away. Pales in comparison to what you're suggesting. So don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I, I totally get what you're saying. And I miss those days. I spent probably too much time uh, studying, reading, memorizing uh, double album covers. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I love it. Just love it. I mean, we've done the same thing with Spotify. But you know, when someone pulls a, an album out of the stack, and without even looking at it, they'll be like, play, play the second side, the third cut. Yeah. You're like, yeah. That's yeah. Great, great yeah. stuff. Well, good stuff. I think we well, all agree. I don't know, Brett. I, I, I agree. I've been very hesitant to get back into it because when it comes to that stuff, I have an addictive personality and I know it's going to probably cost me uh, my mortgage every month <laughs> if, uh, if I start going down that road. But uh, it is intriguing. I actually Baby have steps. a, I Baby have a steps. stack of albums from when I was a kid that I've, I've yeah. moved with me. Yeah. Uh, through multiple places now, and I knew I never wanted to get rid of them, and I still have them here. I, I um, have, yeah, I've got but them. I don't have that many. I probably I have less than a, a milk crate's worth of them. Uh, but if I do go back that direction, it's going to be a, an addiction, and I, I know that's why I avoid it. So uh, I, I get it. And well, the re- the reason I don't go back to it is uh, the ease of Spotify. It's just it's just so ridiculously easy. You can just think of any song you want and have it be playing in twenty seconds. You know, uh, so. There's there's some pluses and minuses, but you're right. It's a great experience to, yeah. to thumb through that vinyl, no question. There, there is, and with some of the new vinyl releases, you, you know, that day the doorbell rings and the delivery guy hands you <laughs> the vinyl the day it came out. It's like, yeah, just like childhood. Yeah, very nice. Carl from Ruckus, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate having you here. We also appreciate you having as a founding supplier on the soapbox. You can meet with Carl, and sometimes Jordan. From Ruckus, on the soapbox. Carl, thanks again. Loved having you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.